So the game that I'm about to show you guys today uh, is also known as the Opera game or a night at the Opera because it was played at the Opera in Paris in 1858 between Paul Morphy, a very strong chess master of his era, uh, against Duke Carl and Count Isord, who were who had teamed up to play against Paul Morphy. Uh, so this one starts off with e4 by Morphy, and the opponents respond with e5, and knight to f3 then by Morphy attacking the central pawn. And remember, we're talking about 1858, so he had uh, known everything about chess that still people don't know. Here, opponents respond with d6, uh, which is kind of passive because you allow d4, central space. And if the pawn does take, you can simply take back with the knight as well. So d4 comes up, uh, but instead of taking with the pawn, the opponents decide to pin the bishop. So now pawn captures the central pawn and bishop takes the knight attacking the queen. Now you can take with the pawn or you can take with the queen. Uh, what would be your choice? Uh, it should ideally be, be taken with the queen because you don't want to spoil your pawn structure. Otherwise, you have, will have double pawns and opponent can take. But the advantage with that can be that if you do to take here and opponent does take, then you can take the queen and opponent will lose the castling rights and your position is not that bad either. So both ways are fine, but taking with queen is much better because, as I said, doesn't spoil the pawn structure. Opponent decides to take the pawn here, which had to be taken. And now bishop comes to c4. Now the idea with bishop to c4 is to go for a scholar's mate uh, with the queen taking on f7, uh, which is also called the scholar's mate with you when you're trying to mate with the queen and the bishop. So if you're already liking this game, please do subscribe to the channel as well. Doesn't take much of your time and helps me grow this channel as well. So in this position, um, Morphy, uh, the opponents respond with knight to f6, uh, which of course blocks the diagonal of the queen, uh, the uh, the line of the queen. So now queen comes on to the, to the diagonal instead, coming to b3. Now queen b3 is a very strong move because not only we are threatening to take the pawn on f7, the queen is also threatening to take the pawn on b7, which can lead to uh, the rook being uh, dismantled as well, if of course the queen moves away. Uh, in this position, uh, queen to e7 was played, and the best move, the engine's choice, is to take the pawn. Now, uh, but Morphy doesn't do so. Morphy plays his own style. He was an artist that didn't go for the pawn straight away. Uh, the problem uh, with when you take this pawn, which engine will see probably later on, is that queen comes on to b4 with a check. And now queens will be traded off the board uh, as bishop takes. So the advantage is still there with black, uh, with white, of course. Uh, but uh, your king uh, can be uh, a bit worrisome here. You can lose your bishop pair as well if you just try to put the bishop in between. Pawn for, uh, forward is also another move, but you take the natural square for the knight. And when you are attacking, it you should never trade off pieces. And that's the thumb rule of attacking in chess. So instead of taking that pawn and going for a queen exchange, uh, Morphy decides to develop a piece, which is knight to c3. Now, now if uh, there is no checks coming, so there will be no uh, queen trade happening, uh, Morphy can simply go for uh, queen to c8 as well eventually. So here comes a pawn to c6, which defends the pawn now, discovered defense with the queen. And since the opponent's pieces are very much passive here, not developed, king is still in the center. Yes, Morphe's king is also in the center, but can castle any time, which is not the case with the opponent. And the bishop is very passive because you put the queen on e7. So this is always a bad uh, position to be in. And when your opponent is in the bad position, you should continue attacking. That's what Morphe does. Bishop to g5 now, pinning this knight as well. Uh, now, pawn forward was played b5, trying to expand from the other side of the board uh, because you cannot do much here. So you try to counterattack and remove the bishop from here so that there's no much, no longer a threat of bishop takes on f7. So that the queen can move into the action and therefore the bishop will also be able to get out thereafter. Uh, but here, uh, most people would do is uh, put the bishop backwards and save it. Morphy decides to take on the pawn with the knight. And his idea is amazing because after pawn takes, you can take back with the bishop with a check as well. And now if you see these, these bishops are nasty. The queen as well. 
uh, is in the picture and what better to get more pieces in, into the tag thereafter so knight is played to d7 there's no other good move because of course if you just play king over here long castle looks deadly because rook will be in front of the king straight away so instead of moving the king uh opponent decides to place knight to d7 uh and morphy castles on the queen side now again these bishops are very sharp the queen is sharp bishop here as well as sharp the rook has come in the center and and even these a small rook lift can double up the rooks as well here in the open file. So uh, the Philidor defense that uh, the opponents took in this game has be, is being taken apart uh, by Paul Morphy step by step, uh, making sure that the position is already improved in every move, whatever Morphy is playing. So in this position, uh, rook was played on to d8, uh, trying to defend the knight further. Because if bishop takes and queen takes, again a problem, knight can fall, pawn structure will spoil from here as well. You can take the rook as well, because the rook is standing now there. Uh, so, it's a good position to be in. And here, uh, Morphy comes up with a nice idea. Rook takes the knight, not the bishop. Because if you take with the bishop, uh, the skill can be rook takes the bishop. And the, the harm that was being done... Is, isn't being done much now because after the rook, rooks are trade, you can take back with the queen and you are you can live to fight this uh, game another day. So there's no problem here as such. Only 1.4 in advantage of white, which is still strong uh, for many uh, strong players. Uh, but here the position gets better. So instead, uh, Morphy takes on with the rook, which is more a forcing move uh, and to be dealt with. And now if, of course, knight takes, it's bad because you lose the queen and the game is over. If you take with the rook, which does happen in the game, Morphy doesn't take. Morphy doesn't take. He continues applying pressure uh, onto the d7 square by getting the other rook now. And if you see, Morphy is a down material, if, if that is the way. Because opponent has a couple of rooks. Morphy has just one rook. Two minor pieces for the opponent, two for uh, Morphy as well, and queens are equal. So basically, now uh, Morphy is down a piece, but doesn't matter because this position is crashing for the opponent because of lack in development of the pieces. The two pieces that are still there on their original squares have never been moved and cannot be considered anything that they can do here. Now, the blow here was next after. Now, queen is played because you definitely want to get out and try and exchange the queens. Still, you have can get some chance because if queen takes queen, you can take with the pawn. Yes, this is hanging, but the move order can be correct. If you take the knight with the bishop, the game is sorted. You can simply just put up and then, then you can trade off. And this is also losing for sure, but at least equal in material uh, if you see a rook and a bishop for a rook and a bishop with extra pawns and better pawn ch structure uh, for Morphe. But this way you have to go in an end game. Why do you have to go in an end game uh, when you are crashing the opponent already? So rather, here uh, after a queen is played, uh, just to extrade off the queens, uh, Morphe doesn't go for the queen trade, but takes the rook with the bishop. Now his idea is again very nice. Uh, either the qu uh, queen will hang after the opponent takes, uh, so open doesn't take but gets the knight in between because now there is no pin uh, so open can take with the knight and now if you see material wise uh, black is winning but position wise white is way ahead why so there's a mate in two here of course this uh, line is being shown here but still can you find it because this is a very powerful move because you can't do much the only move here is to take this with the knight uh, uh, the only legal move to save the checkmate for now. And after opponent takes, rook goes on to d8 with a beautiful checkmate because the bishop saves the rook. The king cannot go anywhere. Uh, this is controlled with the rook. This one is with, with the bishop. And, and nothing can take the rook right now because it's defended with the bishop. So a complete domination, 17 move games. Uh, it is one of the most famous games that chess has ever seen. And now you can definitely see why so because four pieces uh much of a stronger advantage against couple of pieces you don't even have the queen a queen and knight are extra with the opponent but opponents can't do much because the artist 
Paul Morphy had everything going his way uh, from beginning to the end, dominating this game of chess by including all the pieces into an attack. That's the way you should always attack. Don't worry about the pieces that you have, but try to make sure the opponent's pieces are not developed properly. You keep attacking. Uh, you don't exchange queens, which if w- would have happened, this can go to an end game and then games can game can turn around. Rather, keep dominating with the game and you will see good results here. I hope you enjoyed it and it was instructive as well. And if you have liked the video, please do let me know your feedback and do subscribe to the channel as well. And I shall see you tomorrow with some interesting and instructive content like always. Thanks for your time. Take care. Bye-bye.